quick video about some of the latest things I've done here. Uh, I did do the um, trailing edge, a little gusset here that goes on there. That looks a lot better than the first one, but you know, it just, he comes with experience. What I did on this one was like the pictures on the CD that, um, but they're kind of hidden. They're under miscellaneous, so I didn't see them the first time around. And um, uh, the factory pointed it out to me, but uh, so on this one, basically what I did is, is I put a rivet, I, I, um, I put the, the sheet, instead of putting it this way, like I did on the last one, so it was kind of lengthwise around it and having more to cut off, I just put it widthwise, so it's wider. I think that's where you're supposed to do it probably anyway. Um, there was a picture on the, uh, in the, you know, in the instructions that was a little misleading because it shows rivets at the end, and I don't think that's how it was designed to be put on. Um, you could put it on anyway, really, but I just I think it's probably not the most efficient So um, what I did was I did a rivet here on the top of the sheet And then I did a rivet on the bottom and then I did a rivet here also into the tube You can kind of see it through the tape right there and then on the bottom and then just taped it up So it's nice and smooth and it really does look pretty smooth on the front So that's what I did there and then I went ahead and I put the hinges on the ailerons and I installed the ailerons just kind of temporarily because the last, well, second to last thing I have to do on this right wing is put the trailing edge ribs on. So there's seven of them and uh, you want to leave a half inch space between the aileron and the trailing edge ribs. I'm not getting the flaps option. If you do get the flaps, then you want to, obviously the flaps will go here and you'll, you'll kind of um, install the flaps and the flap motor uh, on the fuselage. But um, so what I'm going to do is just do the trailing edge flaps. And so about a half an inch, I'll start here. And you'll see, you see these two um, small tubes right down here. This is going to be for the trailing edge of, of the trailing edge flaps and then, or trailing edge um, ribs. And then the little thing right there, those are the trailing edge ribs. So there's 14 and I'm going to stick them on the big, on the spar right here. And then on the, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, they'll look kind of like the ailerons like that, except this part will attach to the uh, trailing edge spar, and then the front, the um, the trailing edge of those will attach those little tubes. You rivet them in place, you gotta make sure they're level. That's really important, because it's obviously part of the, part of the flight control um, surface, or, you know, wing surface, so these are the flight control surfaces, but you know what I mean. You want them to, you don't want it to be producing lift in that area when you don't want lift, and so, after that, then it's the push-pull tubes, and I'm not sure about the links and all that. I haven't even taken them out of here yet, but um, that's the last thing I'll work on. And again, I'm still waiting on the threaded inserts that go in there, and I think I have the ball joint heads. And once I put all that together, then uh, I can I can t I can kind of secure it, you know, maybe tape it around uh, one of the compression tubes, so it won't flop around in the wing when I flip it up up around to paint or to uh, do the fabric. So. I'm ready to move to the left wing, but I don't want to rush it. Because obviously rushing led to what I did before where I put the aluminum rivets in here instead of the stainless steel. But thankfully it only took like 30 minutes to fix it. So I'm happy about that. Again, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Um, you know, it's I'm working on it maybe about an hour or two a day or every other day, something like that. So it's kind of nice. It's coming along. Thanks for watching. Beginning the install here of the um, trailing, ed ed trailing edge ribs, and uh, so I've got the um, this little uh, basically aluminum sheet that's uh, I don't know it's pretty hard, but it's uh, it's pretty firm, and I've got that in place, and I've got it um, basically uh, supported against the leading edge spar and then the trailing edge spar, and uh, what that does is just um, flattens out the trailing edge rib real nice, and uh, sorry it's so dark in here it's really raining outside so. Uh, I'm in the garage tonight, uh, but anyway, um, so then the small tube's going to attach here, and there's seven of these, so yeah, so this is the first one. I got the first hole drilled in the top, and I'm about to rivet with SS44 rivets for the spar and SS42, the smaller stainless steel rivets for the back, so I'm going to do that, and I'll show you the progress as I go. my son Justin what up <laughs> so here we are almost done got to do the bottom rivets on the trailing edge ribs 
and um, everything is, is looking good there. The distance between the aileron and the trailing edge ribs is 3 8 inch to a half an inch. So it's pretty close. I think it's like a half inch at the trailing edge part, edge, edge part and then the uh, uh, front part or the, is kind of where, right where the tube is, the leading edge of the aileron. It's about 3, three 8 inch. So after this, I'm waiting on um, hardware from Tom for um, basically a new, either a new bolt or a new, um, what is it, the spacer. One of the two, I think it's a new bolt size because the bell crank, the bolt wouldn't go through. It's an AN4-20 bolt and it wouldn't work. So I've got a, it wasn't going all the way through. But um, we'll get that set. Then the bell crank will go on and then fabric, fabric work. And then that's, I'm going to try to cut the slit for the, uh, the um, rear strut bracket. Awesome. So what I have is the this is the large inserts that go into the one inch by 0.035 inch walls. Uh, the reason why I'm joking about that is because um, one of these was being a sucker and would not go in, so I had to sand the end down and uh, just just uh, mallet it in. And so, but I got this this one and this is a SS44. There's three of those rivets, and I, I put them about 120 degrees or so around the tube so um just three of them and uh did the other side too so you do that to, to two of the tubes one for each side and this is the long push pull tube that's going to connect to the bell crank all the way down to the root tube there's a couple bell cranks there and then runs up to another bell crank um to to uh, uh it actually goes it goes yeah down town um i guess from one to the down to the other bell crank and then down to the torque tube so um, when I get the fuselage, you'll see all that. But uh, it's coming. This is the long one. I got to do the small inserts into the smaller pieces for uh, the ones that go back to the ailerons. So we got the push-pull tubes in action here. Um, the big ones and the small ones, like I was mentioning the other day. Uh, for these small ones, they get SS42 rivets, and one is spaced at three quarters inch from the end, and then the other one is seven eighths inch, so they don't hit each other. But um, those uh, SS42 rivets just like barely go in. If you try 44s, they're not they're going to stick out. They're not going to go all the way in. There's the jam nuts on the end with the ball joints, male ball joint heads. So, um, and then like I mentioned, this is SS 44s and there's three of them in there. And um, yeah, but the small push pull tubes look like that on both sides. So those are both done. Just waiting on the uh, upward belt crank. Um, actually, the 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 uh, spacers were the wrong. Width, so you know, I think I showed <coughs> this before. I might have mentioned this before. I don't remember, but um, so you got the, the bell crank, and then the spacers. These are the these are big, and I think this these were the wrong size. So Tom's sending the smaller ones. There's a new guy there working, I guess, in the uh, factory. So, but yeah, getting the small ones. I think they're white or something like that. Probably doesn't matter what color. It's just uh, these are like seven eighths inch high or, or or wide, not wide, but um, tall. So yeah, they're too big, and so then those AN420 bolts don't work. They're too short. So moving along though, just that one last little bit. Once I get the um, push-pull tubes, or at least the big one, installed, I'm going to cover with fabric and then bang out that second wing. Just a quick video about the bell crank. So you got the little large push-pull tube, um, and uh, I'm not exactly sure exact. this is the exact location for this, but but uh, I guess I can adjust it later. But I've got a smaller bolt through there with a washer into the bell, into the um, ball joint head, and then another washer castle nut on top with a cotter pin. So uh, that can rotate around a little bit. And then same thing here, except I did, I got from Tom at the factory, um, the smaller uh, spacer in there. I don't know if you can see. It's a little, um, maybe from this angle. Yeah, you see it's a, not as high. And then it just comes through with the bolt. You get the wash uh, washer on the top with a castle nut. 
So that's in there, and then you just wait. Uh, one thing I did have to do is kind of drill a little bit of the, just so the bolt would fit through through the hole there. But um, the uh, aileron push-pull tube will wait until um, the bottom covering is done. I've done a little bit of taping on the gussets on the top side, so I'll just try to make sure all the taping's done, and then it's uh, fit the sheet for the bottom. We're gonna cover the bottom first. Um, and of course, what I really need to do when I talk about taping is make sure that the trailing edge ribs are really taped, because there's a lot of sharp edges there so I'll have to take the mallet and mallet down some of the ends um, where the little tabs were riveted and so just make sure they're flush and smooth tape it real good but then put the bottom sheet on cover it and then the top sheet will go on from there and then we'll just do the inspection covers this inspection plates and um, the uh, yeah install the ailerons and or maybe not install them but because I'm gonna paint the wing first and then install everything together once uh, the fuselage is done but yeah, and one other thing I might do is drill, I think I mentioned, I may have mentioned this in a previous segment, but just um, drill for strobe lights. I think I'm gonna put the 18 gauge wire in and then just have a little bit taped along here um, uh, outside the, the fabric covering. And, uh, but I'll, I'll run it in, actually I can do it after I do the bottom fabric sheet. Just drill a hole, have the strobe lights for later. I'm not sure if I'm gonna install those yet, but I probably will. And then just run the wire in and just you know kind of get it zip tied out of the way uh, for this tube, I just I used I don't have zip ties at this time, but I just use a little bit of yarn just to hold it when I flip the wing upside down um, to uh, cover the the top part. Uh -huh.